Hello everyone, my name is Michael and welcome back to another episode in the Selenium tutorial series. In this episode, we will see how we can deploy our script in AWS Lambda using the AWS SAM CLI method. Now, using this updated method allows us to use any Python version, which is something we couldn't do with the old method I showed you in another video. Now we will be using Docker to achieve this, so we will basically Dockerize our app and then deploy that Docker image to AWS. As well, we will be using AWS SAM CLI to do that. And yeah, I think that's it. So first things first, go ahead and click the link down in the description and go to my GitHub page right here, Python Selenium AWS SAM CLI, and we will clone this. So Click here and let's clone it. Then let's open open it in Visual Studio Code. Now something very important that took me almost a whole day to figure out is that you must go to here to dot the dot ch file. And if you are using Visual Studio Code, but I think with any editor this happens. As you will see by default, right down here, I don't know if I can zoom. Yeah, I can zoom. Okay, right here. As you see, it says select end of line sequence and it is to CRLF. You must change that to LF. Otherwise, you will be having issues and it will not work. So make sure you do that. And yeah, that should fix any issues. Okay, so after you do that, let me explain a bit what's going on here. So we have the app.py, which is where our Selenium script will go. And as you see, I have coded a simple script. We will be using Selenium wire, so we can use proxies. Now, it's very important to use proxies with AWS Lambda because when testing locally, your proxy, your IP, basically your local IP will be usually clean, but when you're running your script in AWS Lambda, almost any website with very simple bot detection system will detect that you have hosted your script on AWS Lambda and most likely block you. So yeah, when testing in Lambda, it's good to use proxies. And now that we talk about proxies, my number one suggestion for a proxy provider is Node Maven. We've been working together for a long time and they are our sponsor of this channel for a long time. But besides suggesting them because they sponsored this video, I also suggest them because I use them myself and I use them with all of my clients for any projects that we do with web scrapping or web development. We've been using Node Maven for all of it. So yeah, I suggest them a ton. They have 95%, you see, they advertise that they have 95% clean proxies which is very important so you don't get it detected and your script fails or you get your account banned or something like that depends on your task. Also, if you use code Michael on checkout, you'll get an extra 2 gigabytes of bandwidth. So after you sign up to Node Maven and you purchase, you can either go for the trial they have or you can get a, a normal plan. And after you buy a package right here, and here you can select your country. Now, if you select a specific country like United States, you can also select the region, city and ISP, the internet provider basically. So that's great. Also, you can select the station type. So either a sticky proxy, which means that by using one of those proxies right here, you have the same IP address. I think it's up to 24 hours or more. Or you can specify the seconds here. And of course, rotating is basically every time you run your script, a new IP address will be used. I'll also show you how you can test the proxy so you can see yourself if they are clean or not, and you can compare yourself what proxies you want to use. And so basically, if you go to Firefox and type pixel scan Firefox extension, this will be it right here. As you see, it's already installed for me, but you can go ahead and install it. And as you'll see, bulk proxy checker right here. You can open it. 
and we can run a new test. So let's grab a few proxies. Let's say 50. Copy them. And we can click check proxies. And there we go. So as you see, average quality level we got is high, which is what we want. And low quality IPs is 14%. Now it can get better. You can basically configure your settings here. So you can switch countries or ISP basically and get cleaner proxies. So you need to play a bit with those settings right here and you will get better results. But as you see, we, we still got very good results. So about 86% of the IPs are very clean. And as you see, this is what we are looking for, for the risk score to be under 10%. So this is great results. And of course, success rate, which is guaranteed with paid proxies to be 100%. Any lower than 100% will guarantee your script to fail. So we need 100% success rate for proxies. And of course, the risk score basically is how likely they are to be detected. Okay, so we will be using proxies in a bit. Let's go back to our script now. And yeah, as you see, what this script does is go to goes to whatismyip.com. And basically, we can supply a proxy on the event.json here. Now, this is for testing locally. On production, you can send an event.json or basically send your proxy here to be used with. And then we get the title of the page and the IP. So we can see if the proxies actually works. Now, this is a very simple example. Of course, you can use your own custom script. Now, next we have the Chrome devs and you can leave it as it is. Just we just downloading some Chrome dependencies, the Docker file, of course. Now, this is very important here. As you will see, to be able to change the Python version to what you want to use, you can change it right here. Now I have tested 3.10, 11 and 12 and 3.9 and 3.7 I think they all work and maybe on 3.9 and below I think you can remove this one right here so yeah if you want to change the python version all you have to do is change it here here and maybe over here on the template.yaml and yeah I think that's it now you can also uh, select the chromium version now this is the latest that is working fine with all python versions but of course, in the future, you probably want to update that. Then we have the install browser and basically we are installing Chromium based on the Chromium version we have selected. And of course, all this happens, happens automatically when we compile our script with Docker. I'll show you in a bit how we can do that. And of course, here on the requirements.txt, you need to specify the requirements you want for your script. And as you see, I have specified Selenium, Selenium Wire. And also I have specified Blinker. It's required so Selenium Wire works with Docker. So if you are using Selenium Wire, you must also give this one right here, Blinker 1.7.0. And of course, the template.yaml here, you can specify the timeout, the memory size. But this is for local testing. Of course, you can configure that on AWS Lambda as well on the settings. And yeah, that's it. So let's start with the commands. First of all, you must install Docker. I'll have the link down in the description. And after you install it, you also want to install AWS SAM CLI also in the description. And as you'll see, the, install the installation is very simple. You can click Windows here if you have Windows and install it right here and just set it up. I think the same is for Mac OS. Yeah, you can select either the Intel processor version or the ARM version for Apple Silicon. Okay, so after you install Docker and some CLI, let's go back on VS Code, go to Terminal, New Terminal. And the first thing you want to do is configure your account, your AWS account locally. Now to do that, first of all, you need to generate some access key codes or access keys basically. So to generate the access keys, again, link down in the description, you'll go to the IM dashboard or you can search it here. So IM and this will be it. And then click manage access keys. And then you want to go here. Now I have already created one. So let me delete it so I can show you again how you can do that. So we will click 
create access key. I understand, create access key. And then copy it, go on your VS code and type AWS configure. Copy it, copy paste it. Then you want to paste your secret access key. So copy it and paste it as well. Then for default region name, you can specify the region you want for your Lambda, but you can also do that later. But if you want, when you deploy your script to be by default on a specific region, you can specify that now. So EU West one is what I have specified and the rest you can leave to know. And that's it. Now the next thing we want to do is compile our script using Docker. So to do that, we'll do some build and this utilizes the some CLI we downloaded from AWS. Now this takes some time and also, as you see, it will give us an error. We need to open Docker and have it running on the background. So this command can work. Okay, so there we go. So now that Docker is running, let's run some build again. Now this will take a while if it is your first time building it because it has to install the Python image, which is usually very big. This one right here. And then also install Chromium every time. And there we go. So as you see, it compiled successfully. And now to run it locally, first of all, we'll have the event.json here. Let's grab a proxy first of all. So let's grab this one right here. Actually, if we don't provide a proxy, just so you can see the difference, let's, I guess, delete this. There we go. So to run it locally, first of all, you can do some local invoke now we we want to provide the event file so we'll do that as event and then invent the json so now we we are basically running running it locally and there we go so as you see it says what is my ip and also my ip now don't worry this is not my actual ip of course i'm using a vpn so now let's grab a proxy and put it here and let's run the command again. Now this time the IP should be different because we are using the proxy and there we go. So as you see, the IP is actually different. So that's perfect. Now let's see how we can deploy it to AWS Lambda. So it's very simple. We will do some deploy dash as guided. Now, the next time you deploy it, maybe you make a change. You have to do some build again. And then instead of does as guided, you will only type some deploy and then let it update basically the script. So yeah, that's all you have to do the next time you make a change and you want to deploy the changes, some build and then some deploy, not some deploy does as guided. Same for local. When you make a change and you want to test it locally, you will do some build again. So basically build a new image and then test it locally. So yeah, let's deploy it now and see the steps. Okay, so you can put a stack name or you can leave it as this. I will leave it as this. AWS region. Now here it will use either the default one we set when we did AWS configure, but or you can set up your own region. For now, I'll leave it as it is. And then confirm changes before deploy, yes. Allow some, yes. Disable roll, rollback, no. Yes. Default, default, and that's it. Now this will actually, it says create, manage, yes. I guess you can leave all the default and it will work just fine. But if you want to change any of those, you can go ahead and change them. Now this will take a while to do. So let's leave it and wait until it finishes. As you see, it also creates a some config.toml. This only happens the first time. And there we go. So after a while, it took several minutes. 
as you see, it asks me if I want to deploy this change set. Don't click enter. Make sure you type yes and then click enter. Because by default, you will, will pick no. And there we go. As you see, it is deployed. So let's go back on Google. And now if we refresh Lambda functions, there we go, this is it. So let's click it. Now you can test it in two ways or actually in more ways, but first of all, you can either test it here and provide the JSON immediately right here. So you can, for example, provide the proxy. There we go. And let's click test. And there we go, that's it. As you see, what is my IP address and the IP address of the proxy. Perfect. And that should be it. Now our Python script is deployed. Okay, you can also use the command line to run it on production. So all you have to do is do sum, remote, invoke. Then you need to provide this ID right here, the function ARN. And then, of course, we need to provide the event.json. So we'll do does does event file. So this is different from local. Here you have to do does does event does file. And then event.json. And as you see, it's involved. It's running on production now. It's not running locally. And there we go. It works. So we got the title and also the IP address. So yeah, thank you for watching this video. If you liked it and it was helpful, I'll really appreciate if you hit that like button and subscribe and hit that bell notification so you don't miss any of my future tutorials. So yeah, so yeah, with that said, see you in the next video.